Welcome back to Mideast in Depth. Today our focus is on Israel. In Lebanon's Daily Star, David Ignatius writes that Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu has been a dominating political figure in the United States this year, but not so much in Israel. He writes that Netanyahu said Thursday he had been leaving the foreign minister position vacant for Labour Party leader Isaac Herzog in hopes of broadening his base, but Herzog quickly rejected the offer. He adds, Israeli analysts note that Netanyahu's congressional speech blasting the Iran deal, which was so prominent and polarizing in America, didn't matter much in the Israeli election. He predicts, with Netanyahu's help, the Republicans may be attempting a realignment that seeks to convince pro-Israel voters that their natural home is the Republican Party rather than a de Democratic Party that keeps pressuring Israel for concessions. Ignatius points out that a sign that conservative Americans and Israelis are seeking such a realignment would be the pledges by Republican presidential candidates to work with Netanyahu to overturn the Iran deal. He states, Netanyahu's camp hopes for a new opening with Gulf Arab states that share mistrust of Iran. A top Israeli official argues that the Jewish state is the only reliable partner for Saudi Arabia and other Gulf countries in a region dominated by Iran-backed Shiite radicals, a Turkish-led Muslim Brotherhood bloc, and jihadis of Al-Qaeda and ISIS. He concludes, an Israeli-Arab alliance against Iran is intriguing, but like much else about Netanyahu's fledging government, it's more an aspiration than a practical agenda. Netanyahu, so potent in America, has a shaky base at home. Anshul Pfeiffer comments in The Guardian that Netanyahu represents survivalist determination, not Israel's interests. He states, Israel, with its proportional representation election system, has only ever had coalition governments, but the latest, which is Benjamin Netanyahu's fourth, is already shaping up to be one of the worst. He predicts that two things may happen. Long-term stagnation, during which none of Israel's cardinal issues, the occupation of the Palestinian territories, inequality within its society, and the neglect of minority communities will continue and deteriorate, or there will be another election that is unlikely to yield better results. The real mystery, however, he writes, remains Netanyahu himself, a man who has succeeded in surviving all of his rivals, dominating Israel's political scene for much of the last three decades and establishing himself as a default prime minister without giving Israelis a clear idea of where he wants to lead the country. He states that Netanyahu's party had little, if any, debate on the government's key defense and diplomatic policies, crucial issues for an Israeli administration, or on social policy. Above all, Netanyahu was insistent on the safeguards that would minimize outside criticism and judicial oversight. He concludes, he has sub sublimated the national interest in his own image as the man who knows what is best for Israel and now a democratically elected coalition exists to serve that purpose only. For more updates, please visit Levant.tv. And subscribe to Mideast In Depth on iTunes. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.